Hi, I'm Frankie Dancehall Paul Field Gagal. Whenever I'm in Wolverhampton, I turn my radio to Skyline Radio, where you can hear for Big Bad Captain. Greetings, this is Nadia Makanov, and you're listening to the Big Bad Captain on the Simmer Down Sunday Show. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know That I'll be drumming all over your walls And I'll be singing all over your history Drumming all over your walls And I'll be singing all over your history One love I represent for the body's radio station. I'm Mr. Skyline Radio. The thing turn up loud. Huh. Skyline! Let's try her again. Blessed love. Greetings, Nadia. Is this the big bad captain? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to say yes, greetings, um, Nadia. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I know it's early, early in the morning for you. Tell me exactly where you are right now. I'm in California. Oh, you're in ca- California? Approximately 8 a.m. 8 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. Quite early. Yes, sir. Why oh, your voice sounds so fresh and you just wake up? <laughs> Eh? No man is a thing, you know, like sometimes we have to perform on the spot. So oh, when you just wake up, you just put some Vicks under your feet and go. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and you're good to... Boy, I'm going to tell you something fresh, fresh. I wouldn't like to see you four hours into the day because you just wake up and you're so fresh. But anyway, right, yeah. where did it all <laughs> begin for Nadia Makanoff? Because it's a very unique surname as well, Makanoff. I don't really hear that yes. name, they're too tough still. So, where did it all begin for Nadia? Well, for I, it all begin, began um, on Bubba Hill, you know, for the first, I would say maybe the first seven years of my life. Um, that's where I spent it with my mom. And um, she taught me a lot about, um, uh, you know, Rastafari, just nature and myself. You know, and um, that kind of ventured into my love for Naya Bingi and my love for chanting and singing, you know. Um, we weren't allowed to play Naya Bingi, but I used to play it on everything I could. <laughs> and I used to love to, you know, go to All Night Bingi because it, um, you know, it opened up to me learning the patterns of the Kete, the Fundi and the bass. So even though I was only allowed to watch, um, it helped me a lot um, with my drumming, you know. Okay, so and, so, um, so so Nadia, why was for it me that was soothing, you know? What well, well, under Nadia? Why why wasn't you allowed to play the, the, the kettle drum while while you was? Um... um, well, that's that's how it has been in um in all the orders, you know, especially the Baba Shanti order. Um, uh, the empresses weren't allowed to play. Um, so I, as I got older, I started researching, um, uh, you know, my African roots. And I, I, I found out that there was a woman called Queen Naya Bingi. And that's kind of where the, the Naya Bingi even stemmed from. You know, so in Africa, a lot of women play the drums. When it comes to African drum and dance, the women usually play the dun dun, which is like the bass drum. Um, but there's other women that plays the jimbe, which 
to me is like the kete, you know. Um, so I found out that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with me playing it. And I've been getting a lot of fight for playing it, but I still do. And uh, my mom is the first one to give me a drum, a kete drum, which I still have now. You've seen it all online, <laughs> you know, the drum with the with the Africa, the red, gold and green Africa on it. That was given to me specifically from my mom. Um, so I've just been playing it ever since, you know, even through my pregnancy, I played the drum <laughs> and um, it has been um, very soothing and healing to me, you know. Okay, then. So um, where did you, because uh, reading your bio, it uh, yes. tells me that um, you were self-taught um, yes, as, as, I a, was. as a singer. So where did it, where yes. did it, where did your first recording um, come about? My first recording um, came about in Miami, Florida. I was working with an empress called Sister Candace, and she had a restaurant there too. And I entered a singing contest called Janet's Talent Show. Um, and that was when I was like 16 years old. And Sister Candace taught me how to make my outfit. So we made the outfit. I entered the contest and I won first place. Go on, Anna. Go on. <laughs> and that, yes. So that's how everything started, you know what I mean? <laughs> After I won that contest, I sent the trophy home to my mom in Jamaica. And I was like, mom, you know, say I'm going to try this thing. This is what I love to do. And my mom was like, well, that's where you got it from your dad, you know. And if that's what you love to do, I'm here, you know. So that's kind of how everything started. Because, um... And then... Go on, sorry. I'm listening. No, man, I'm listening. You, you've got the... Wait uh, because, <laughs> because because what it is because you've been singing for so long so so long yes and it coming like say, yes. everybody just I start to hear about Nadia Makanoff so um yes. so can you just um tell us a little bit about your back catalog Right. Well, you know, we, we've been doing it up to now on an independent level. You know, I didn't I, I, I still, you know, I didn't really get that much support with it. So usually that's how it is, you know, but I've been around and I've uh, after that, I started a band with a brother named Eric Redis from Miami. And the band uh, title was, he was like, yeah, I could just call it Agape featuring Nadia Harris because he said I remind him of Agape, you know, um, <laughs> which is kind of like a universal, the universal love of the most I still. So we formed that band and we released a few videos. We released a few EPs that you can find online titled Agape featuring Nadia Harris. And um, we did that for like maybe 10 years and, you know, we had some great moments and um, we're still working on videos and songs to be released, you know. Um, but I decided that I wanted to venture into Jamaica and really learn from the people there. Um, you know, go around some of the, the Naya Bingi drummers who would welcome me so I can learn more from them about the original technique that they usually play, you know. And, um, you know, work with some of the producers my dad worked with, you know, and that's how Words of I Mouth, I mean, Words of Wisdom, which which was written by Micah Shamaya. Um, and, and then I started singing on some rhythms for uh, Ben Up from Channel One. Um, and that's where uh, Peace Equal Solution came from. And then I started working with forever music and we did a song called slave called i was there you know and then um linval thompson we did words of i mouth you know oh yeah and i remember now, that tra- i remember that with tune the then. from france excuse mm. me yes no i remember that track from with linval thompson yeah man words of i mouth uh, you know you know linval has some great rhythms and, that. Uh, what i respect about linval thompson the most is he's been doing this for a really long time from the former band but if you listen to his vocals it's on point <laughs> most definitely you know? wow you know so yeah when i grow up i want to be like him. so you know he he kind of let me listen to a lot of the rhythms that he had and you know when we heard that track we were like yeah that's the one words of i and we went to the studio recorded it and you know 
now we're here doing some works with the Ligarians, you know. So, so what um, is the future for Nadia right now? Have you got anything lined up for the latter part of this year? Any um, stage shows? Well, we have some shows um, lined up in France. Um, they're not confirmed as well. That's why I'm not really saying anything. <laughs> as soon as they confirmed, I would let the item know. And, and um, so next year is going to be the year when... Um, I even, you know, get on some of the bigger shows and so, you know, I'm just putting in the work because, you know, once you put in the work, when the time comes, you're ready, <laughs> right? Definitely. So I focus more on just doing the works and learning more about this craft, you know? Okay. I've, I've, so I've, there's a lot more to come. A lot more there's a lot come. more to come. So what it is now, I've got a question to ask you. It's a personal question. Yes, and, um, what? And I'm not going to tell you to go into great detail but um i know this will definitely resonate with the people that are listening right now because um, okay what i can say is that you've experienced some things that have shaken your trust in your humanity i'm not going to ask you what it was but i'm just going to ask you yes. how did you overcome it i i you know music you know music is what helped me to overcome it you know, and, and asking questions because um, when it when it comes to religion, there's a lot of division. Definitely. You know? And for me, for me, even when it comes to Rastafarian religion, I find that we're reading from the same book that the slave master beat into us. You know what I mean? I found that the things that have shaken my my belief is, you know, being forced to pray to a God that's praying to a God that has been, you know, a part of our enslavement and the mentality of enslavement. So I kind of had to break free from that, you know. And uh, for me, I, I'm just asking questions and I'm just still learning. But I just refuse to be um, brainwashed by my own people. Yeah. So through music, yeah, m my heart is healing and, and every, the doors are opening up, you know, and through silence, because, you know, silence is the loudest sound. So I play a lot of music, but a lot of times you, you'll see me in silence, you know, and then just opening up because sometimes you close yourself off because you feel like cer certain things is a certain way. But, you know, I've just been opening up more to even other traditions because for us to understand the puzzle, we have to read all the books, not just some of the books, right? And for me to understand my brothers and sisters, I have to understand where they're coming from. So, yeah, wisdom, knowledge and understanding is there. And, you know, through, through, through doing my research and through playing the drums, <laughs> you know, all it, of it that is like, like the healing process. factor in my life, you know? Okay, okay. One thing that, before you go, one thing that I'd like you to do, because um, you know that we as black people, we're suffering. We've been suffering for a very, very long time. And what I'd like you yes. to do is just give the Empress them some words of encouragement, tell them and make them know to say that if you keep keep it moving and just keep strong yes. and have faith in the almighty but i just yes. want them to hear it from you in your own words some words of encouragement for the empress them is emancipation yes. day tomorrow in england the first of yes, august sir. so you don't know say it's a cultural um time for us right now and it's time where a lot of people are finding themselves since the pandemic and the covid a lot of people have change their mindsets and a lot of people are doing a lot of mm. research a lot of people are confused right now some people don't know if you turn left or turn right or turn back or go forward so i'd like you to give them yes. some some words of encouragement especially the empress then yes so my message to the empress is is you know i and i sometimes we're always like looking for a savior 
while he's looking for someone to save us, it's either a book or a, or a person or, you know, a certain situation. And for me, I would, I just want to let the ones them know, sir, the savior that we're looking for is within us. Instead of looking outside, go with him, you know, and remember, remember that you're special. And it's like if, if I and I wasn't special in the sight, in and outside of the sight, of the most high we would not be here so you know we have to always remember that we're queens we're kings and, and queens of the earth you know babylon might want we think so we are girl and we are boy and we are girl and we are that other word but you know we always have to remember how how precious we are you know and without i and i there would be no children you know so it's really, really important for us to get back to ourselves and look within ourselves to make ourselves stronger, you know. And it's like this whole COVID thing, it it has caused so much division because people are afraid to, to even reach out to each other, or even hold each other's hand. And, you know, we have to remember, say, the touch and the feel of another person is one of the strongest medicine. You know, so we have to remember to love each other and keep love alive through the way we walk and we talk, you know, and we interact with each other, well, you know, and keep the faith, man, keep the faith because love is always there, you know, love is always there. Well, Nadia, I thank you very much indeed. And we're definitely going to have you back on the program and we can go in a more depth as well, yes, because sir. as it's early, we don't want to keep it too long. And um, we're going to say, would you like to say hi to anybody before you go? Yeah, I just want to say um, love and honor to all your listeners. Give thanks for tuning in because without the item, this would not be possible. You know, I want to say love and honor to Philip God for organizing all of this. Big up to you, the big bad captain, you know. And yeah, there's a lot more to come. So stay, stay tuned. Keep it locked for your listening pleasure seen Rastafari oh. Iri, Iri. so we're going to play out with one called The Waiting Room um, can you yes, just in- introduce this track for all of the people because um, this is the song that we're going to play out the interview with yes I now back by popular demand Waiting Room by Nadia Makinoff and the Ligarians one love Thank you very much, Nadia. We'll definitely be in yes, touch I. again, Nadia. Have a great, great day. Yes, I. Respect. Love and honor and give thanks, yeah? Every time. Sitting and them waiting for it.